Our ancient ancestors were just as brilliant as we are today when it came to solving complex problems. The only real difference is that they didn't have access to the same good collective knowledge or raw materials we take for granted today. If you've ever assumed our ancient ancestors were primitive, check out these mind-blowing ancient inventions. And trust us, once you do you'll never look at the past the same way again. Let's start off this countdown with Number Quindishi Kiribati Coconut Armor If your mental image of armor involves a knight in metal plating, prepare to reboot that thought. On the remote Pacific islands of Kiribati, a very different kind of body armor existed, made entirely from coconut fiber, known for its woven design, the armor was reinforced with elements from aquatic animals, and used not for large-scale war, but for ritualized one-on-one -on -one duels over land or resources. These brutal showdowns followed strict traditions, with combatants taking turns wounding each other. Kiribati's culture, first rooted around 5,000 years ago, has long been recognized for seafaring and building massive communal houses called Manaba. However, tracing the armor's exact origins is tough. The community had no written records, and their oral history was suppressed for centuries under colonial rule. Still, what survives of their lore suggests this armor held ceremonial and symbolic weight beyond its protection. It's a raw look into a unique and self-sustaining society whose technology evolved on its own terms. Number 14. Da Vinci Sets Diving Suit Well this is pretty scary, isn't it? Leonardo da Vinci sketched many wild concepts, but one of the strangest and creepiest was his early design for a diving suit. The suit looked intimidating, part armor, part deep-sea horror, and Leonardo refused to share full details, fearing it could be turned into a weapon of war. He envisioned soldiers moving underwater in secrecy, potentially using these suits to infiltrate harbors and wage battles from below the surface. Some of his illustrations suggest breathing tubes attached to floating devices. Others point to internal air pockets, similar to a diving bell. But no version of the suit was ever built in his lifetime. His concern wasn't whether it would work, it was what people would do with it. That hesitation speaks volumes. Da Vinci believed in progress but not at the cost of destruction. While we don't know if the suit would have functioned under real conditions, the fact that he even considered underwater combat in the 15th century says everything about how far ahead his mind was. Number 13. Kazakhstan Sepsis. Ancient Liar. When archaeologists in Kazakhstan re-examined artifacts from Jasidiasar in 2021, one particular object threw them off, an ancient liar nearly identical to one famously unearthed at Sutton Hoo in England. Now, what's mind-bending is that it shouldn't be possible. The Sutton Hoo site dates back to the 7th century, while this Kazakh liar is from the 4th century. This isn't just an age gap, it implies an influence or contact between Eastern Europe and Anglo-Saxon England centuries before anyone thought it existed. Until that point, the Sutton Hoo liar was considered a one-of-a-kind artifact. In fact, it helped define our image of early medieval music. But now, that narrative is shifting. If the same instrument existed three centuries earlier in Central Asia, historians may need to reconsider the origins of this musical style, and possibly rename the piece altogether. Kazakhstan Lyre has a whole new ring to it. It's not just about music anymore, it's a clue pointing to forgotten cultural exchange on a global scale. Number 12. The Prague Astronomical Clock. The astronomical clock in Prague isn't just a timepiece, it's a legend wrapped in gears and mystery. Said to be built by Mikolaj of Kadan in the 14th century, this device tracks time using not just the standard clock but also Babylonian and old Bohemian time systems. The clock's backstory is as chilling as it is amazing. According to local lore, city officials were so impressed by Mikolasha's invention that they blinded him to prevent him from replicating it elsewhere. In an act of defiance, he reportedly hurled himself into the clock's inner workings, taking his own life and trying to destroy his creation with him. Whether or not the story's true, the clock survived, and still functions today. 
South Korea once attempted to build a replica, but the soul of the original couldn't be duplicated. With every tick, this clock isn't just marking time, it's echoing the legacy of a man who paid everything for his invention, and a city forever marked by it. Number 1. Da Vinci Sits Machine Gun Among Leonardo da Vinci's many military concepts, this one stands out for its ambition. It's a fan-shaped machine gun that features 12 barrels arranged in a rotating frame. This wasn't about rapid fire in the modern sense, but it allowed multiple rounds to be loaded, fired and rotated through in quick succession. His design placed the barrels in three tiers. While one tier fired, the second cooled, and the third reloaded, then the process would cycle. This made for near-continuous fire without overheating, something even modern weapons had to figure out centuries later. The frame sat on wheels for mobility, and while it never made it to the battlefield, the blueprint showed every detail needed to construct it. Da Vinci's creativity often blended imagination with function, but in this case, he was designing something extremely tactical. The idea wasn't abstract, it was lethal. He may have drawn it on parchment, but he built it in his mind like a weapons engineer thinking two eras ahead. Now the reason was simple. He never trusted us. Number 10. Roman Whistling Sling Stones The Romans didn't just want to win battles, they wanted to haunt their enemies before the first blow landed. One weapon they used for that was the Whistling Sling Stone, a small but menacing tool that served a psychological purpose as much as a physical one. These stones, dating back about 1,800 years, were crafted with tiny holes that created an eerie high-pitched sound as they flew. It wasn't just noise, those holes also made the stones hit harder, adding extra pressure and damage on impact. A set of these was unearthed in Lockerbie, Scotland, in 2021, likely leftovers from a major clash on nearby Burnswark Hill during the second century. Roman forces were known to use these during attacks to rattle enemy nerves, especially tribal groups unfamiliar with such tactics. Facing an incoming barrage of thousands of screaming projectiles would have been enough to throw even the toughest warriors off their game. Warfare for the Romans was never just about weapons, it was about full domination, mentally and physically. Number 9. The Magic Sphere of Helios in 1866, archaeologists digging through the ruins of the Theater of Dionysus in Athens found a smooth carved marble sphere. At first glance, it didn't reveal much, but etched into its surface was the unmistakable image of Helios, the Greek sun god. That's where the certainty ends. Most scholars agree that the object dates somewhere between the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE, but no one knows exactly what it was used for. Some believe the sphere was used in ritual ceremonies, possibly as part of competitions or pre-battle blessings held at the theater, which was also a venue for gladiator matches. The sun god's presence might have represented strength, guidance, or luck. Others think it served a symbolic purpose in religious events that have since been lost to time. What's clear is that it wasn't just a decorative stone, its craftsmanship suggests deliberate use. Its context, found near a cultural and spiritual hub, points to its importance. But beyond that, its role remains one of Greece's quieter unanswered riddles. Number 8. Heron Sets Automatic Theater During the first century CE, Heron of Alexandria designed something far beyond the tools and gadgets of his time, a fully automated miniature theater. What he built wasn't just a machine, it was a performance. By pulling a single rope, the entire system came to life. Curtains would draw open on their own. Characters would move across the stage. Backgrounds rotated, sound effects, like thunder or lightning, would hit on cue. All of it operated without a direct human touch. Everything was powered by carefully engineered gears, ropes, and weights, working in perfect sequence. It didn't just show mechanical skill, it demonstrated an understanding of narrative timing. Heron's devices weren't just mechanical, they were programmable. This wasn't entertainment for the sake of spectacle, it was automation designed for storytelling. For those who sought it in action, 
it would have seemed supernatural. The level of detail and synchronization in this theater puts Heron in the same breath as modern robotics engineers, just about 2,000 years early. Number 7. Kiom Songdi Observatory. In Changwon, South Korea stands Kaum Songda, a stone tower that looks simple from afar but holds layers of astronomical and symbolic meaning. Built during the 7th century by the Silla Kingdom, it's considered the oldest surviving observatory in the world. Its design isn't just functional, it's encoded with numbers that matter deeply to the people who built it. The structure is made of 362 granite blocks, the number of days in the lunar year. It has 27 visible tiers, which some believe reference Queen Sunduk, Silla's 27th ruler. Above and below its single window are 12 layers each, possibly symbolizing the months or zodiac signs. The circular tower sits on a square base, representing the unity of earth square and sky circle, a concept seen in many East Asian philosophies. While modern tools can calculate planetary motion in seconds, this ancient tower shows that even over a thousand years ago, people were watching the skies with purpose and building monuments that doubled as cosmic calendars. Number 6. Olive Oil Torsion Press. Dr. Emlyn Dodd didn't just read about ancient olive oil methods, he rebuilt them. In 2022, he recreated a pressing technique that may date back over 10,000 years, using a setup far removed from modern machines. His process started with crushing olives using a mortar and pestle. Then, wrapping the paste in a cloth, he twisted the bag using two sticks opposite directions full tension. What came out wasn't just oil, it was rich, raw, and close to what ancient Egyptians likely used daily. The technique, known as the torsion method, probably originated in Crete before spreading to Egypt around 4,500 years ago. Aside from cooking, olive oil was believed to be essential for hygiene, Pliny the Elder even claimed no one was truly clean unless they bathed in it. What Dodd extracted tasted sharper than expected, more like fresh extra virgin than mass-produced blends. It wasn't just about the oil, though. It was about rediscovering an ancient rhythm, a technique built on repetition, strength, and simplicity. Number 5. Hypocost. Central heating may seem like a modern luxury, but the Romans were already living in comfort 2,000 years ago, thanks to the hypocost. Reserved mostly for elite homes and public bathhouses, this system used a clever layout of empty spaces built between floors and walls. Builders would set up a furnace, usually placed in the corner of the building, and the heat would move through those gaps, warming up entire rooms from below and within the walls. Writer and philosopher Seneca often mentioned the hypocost in letters, calling it one of the finer things in life. With the right firepower and smart engineering, a single hypocost could heat massive bath complexes used by hundreds. The method stuck around for centuries and was surprisingly effective given its simplicity. It's a reminder that luxury isn't new, it just keeps getting upgraded. And in places where modern heating isn't common, this ancient system could still hold its own today. Well, Romans were truly awesome people. All right, now let's move to number four, Viking Sun Compass. Now this tech is just groundbreaking. Back in 1948, a curious wooden fragment was recovered from the ruins of a convent in Uinartok, Greenland. What remained was just half of what experts now believe to be an early Viking sun compass. Despite its incomplete state, the artifact has provided serious insight into Norse navigation techniques. The compass would have worked by casting a shadow from a central gnomon or pin, letting sailors determine cardinal directions using the sun's angle. Combined with a sunstone, a calcite crystal used to detect sunlight even through cloud cover, it offered surprisingly accurate guidance across the North Atlantic. With just this setup, Vikings could navigate the 1,600 miles between Greenland and Norway with an error margin as low as 4 degrees. That kind of accuracy wasn't common until magnetic compasses arrived centuries later. Even though only one half of the disk exists, researchers agree its design wasn't accidental. This wasn't decorative. It was functional. 
a survival tool engineered by a seafaring culture that crossed oceans with nothing but sails and skill. Number 3. The Kalmar War Sword. This thing was unearthed beneath the charred remnants of a medieval farmhouse in Kalmar, Sweden. Now this weapon wasn't just a relic, it marked a turning point in sword design. The farm had been torched during the Kalmar War in 1611, a brutal conflict between Sweden and the Union of Denmark-Norway. When the fire consumed the building, the heat sealed this sword beneath layers of ash and stone, preserving it for over four centuries. What makes this blade stand out isn't just its survival, it's the design itself. At the time it was forged, this type of weapon represented a technical evolution, setting the blueprint for swords used in European combat throughout the 1600s. The war itself saw Denmark temporarily take control of the city, but local resistance never wavered. As part of the final peace agreement, Kalmar was handed back to Sweden. This beautiful ancient sword carries more than just historical weight, it embodies a moment when weaponry war and the shifting tides of European power all collided. Number 2. Ancient Scale Armor Way long before chain mail and plated suits, there was this scale armor, one of the oldest types of body protection in recorded history. This early armor wasn't metal slabs or rigid shields, it was made of overlapping pieces of hard material stitched to cloth or leather, creating a flexible yet tough outer layer. Soldiers wore it. Horses wore it. And across civilizations from ancient Egypt to the Scythians, it became a military standard. The oldest surviving set was recovered from the tomb of a warrior named Kinemon, who served Pharaoh Amenhotep II more than 3,400 years ago. Though the exact origin of scale armor is still debated, many trace it back to the Middle East. The design's effectiveness kept it in use for centuries, spreading through trade, conquest, and innovation. When the Scythians encountered Roman forces their armor concept was absorbed and modified again, it wasn't just protective gear, it was adaptable, travel-ready technology, and its basic structure still influences modern armor design today. Number 1. The Disc of Sabu. No one's figured it out, not fully. The Disc of Sabu dug up in Saqqara, Egypt, has been passed off as a candle holder, but that explanation doesn't sit right. It's 5,000 years old, carved from schist, and shaped like a three-spoked wheel, yet no wheels existed in Egypt back then, at least not in any confirmed form. Obsidian or schist isn't easy to shape either, especially not into something this intricate, so why go to all that trouble just for light? Some say it might have held ceremonial significance, others suggest a part of some unknown mechanism. Theories have ranged from practical to outlandish, Aliens, naturally, made the internet shortlists, but ignoring the noise, what remains is an artifact that's out of place in its own timeline. Its design doesn't match any known Egyptian technology, and no other versions have been found. Whether it was spiritual, scientific or both, it's still one of archaeology's quiet puzzles. What do you think about it? What is this really? Well drop your theory below, and we hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did please like share and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon in the next one.